It takes thousands of strokes to paint one face, but hopefully in just a few questions we'll figure out the inspiration behind this work of art and this whole wall right here by Anu. How are you? Hi, I'm doing really well, Ryan. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, what's going on here? Is this uh, an inspiration of yours? Is this a cultural icon? Tell us. Yes, um, it may n it, she may not be a large part of the Mahabharata, but um, the Mahabharata is um, texts that were written um, for in Hindu mythology uh, and religion um, that evoke the Vedas, um, learning about values, uh, Dharma, which is um, a form of uh, values of kings and queens um, and people, general people. And um, in the Mahabharata, there's a king um, who is blind, um, but he can't take the throne um, he can't take the throne because he is blind, but his wife, when she marries him, she blindfolds herself. So I, what I found interesting about that is it seems that in Indian culture, the woman does view her husband as a lord, or has in the past. And um, I'm trying to depict that at the same time saying don't go into a marriage blind, <laughs> uh, metaphorically. Um, but uh, both things I think should change. Um, following uh, blindly uh, your husband because you're bet betrothed. And also I feel that you, someone should know more about what they're doing before they get married, um, whether to whoever it is. So this seems like a wake-up call more than it would be an educational piece because I didn't know the whole history behind this. How is showing this type of work I knew on Long Island at the Sky Cafe here at the Cinema Arts Center, how is that message getting out there? Do you feel you're reaching folks who already have an understanding of Indian culture when you show it in a place like Long Island? Well, that's what I actually want to do, put um, Indian um, culture more on Long Island. Uh, I feel that there should be more of an understanding. The people who are growing up here, um, us Indians and Hindus, are, we retain our culture strongly. And um, it's, it's very enduring and it's something that needs to be understood by people around us as well to understand us. Um, I, I'm happy to ta talk about this with anyone. I, I definitely I find the mythology very interesting. It's not necessarily something I think should be um, perpetuated, but it, um, it's, it's so ingrained that to understand an Indian person, um, the mythology would possibly have to come into play and the religion, um, as well as Indian people themselves, they may not know, maybe their parents are more influenced by it but they get the same values from them. Speaking of values, this picture looks like everyone's grandmother. Who is this? What's going on? Is she a religious figure? Is she a family figure? I mean, this is, it's so inviting. It's just like, come and say hello. Who is she? She is actually a grand aunt. And yes, she is definitely, uh, as you said, she looks like everyone's grandmother. I've had other... Um, Indian friends of mine say, oh, that looks just like, you know, and, they're, and they mention their grandmother. And um, yeah, she's, I call it Amma, which is mother. Just, just that, because she's you know, universal. I don't know how they get like that. I don't know how suddenly they get that smile and that warm look in their eyes, but they're not like ne necessarily like that when you're young, but <laughs> when they get older, they do get like that. Yeah, she's like, yeah. come in, say hello. She's very, very inviting. Is this based on a woman that you know? Um, actually, I didn't know her. She's part. Of, didn't know her. She's part of an ex our extended family, and the extended family is a huge family: aunts and uncles, cousins, all living in the same house in India. Um, she's a grand aunt, my grandmother's sister, but not necessarily blood sister even. So, she, but she lived in the same house. So I obtained a picture of her and she just had that sparkle in her eye and it's now um, a painting. 
For all of you who thought Long Island was void of culture, the Cinema Arts Center is a multiple time winner of the best cultural location on Long Island. And it doesn't stop there. What's going on here? Now this woman looks much younger than her. She's not married, um, but she's in utter sorrow, am I correct? Yes, actually, as you say, she's not married and in utter sorrow. <laughs> I'm like, maybe that's she is married, right. but you know, she doesn't have the blindfold on, so I'm assuming she's not married. Well, that sort of goes in a way. If you see the tears streaming down her face, but it's not out of that. She's actually crying because um, this, this can actually be seen even, you know, of course, in America, where um, they, we all make fun of it, like on um, the Jerry Springer show or something. Um, but she's. Um, an unwed mother. And what happened was, she's Shakuntala. She married a king in the forest. Um, and Shakuntala um, was left uh, under a tree. They said the tree will um, see, the, see to the marital rights. So um, the king left for the kingdom, and Shakuntala had become pregnant, and she raised a child on her own. Now, the king. Um, you know, she decided when the boy grew older that um, he should take his place in the palace. So she takes the boy to the palace, and the king refuses to acknowledge him. No paternity tests now, <laughs> but she refuses to acknowledge him. <laughs> and um, she was so enraged, and um, she, this piece called Believe Me, actually. Um, so she's she cries for him to believe her. First, you know, it's in sorrow, but then anger. And he said, no, that is not my child. I don't even know who you are. And she was even, she's even his wife. And the paternity test here is basically a voice from above <laughs> speaks into the, um, into the hall and says, this is your child. And he said, see, and the king turns and he says, see, I needed to hear that because anybody could come in here and say that that child is mine. So that's, that's the story of Shakuntala. Single mother. <laughs> but why did he leave her by, the, by herself? Well, okay. <laughs> now, kings take on many wives. That's a whole other story. <laughs> and um, they will leave. They and then why did he get to be the heir of the throne? Like, you know... That's he, exactly... That's, he doesn't necessarily, I guess, get the first choice. It's always the oldest. Uh, like in the king, um, um, who was This wife. was Dhridrashtra. Yes, Dhridrashtra. yes. He, did, he didn't get... Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dhridrashtra, and the wife said, because if you're also blind, I'll also stay whole yes. life the blind. So there she puts go. this one, yeah. <laughs> She's Pandavas and all that together, yep, yeah. yeah. Pandavas. Yeah, he you're making your connection it. right now. Yes, exactly. You're making the connection with our videographer, yeah. Girish. Thank you, Girish. <laughs> no. <laughs> but this brings me to my big question for you. You've given us all this beautiful mythology and how you have it interpreted it through canvas and through your fingers and through painting. We have two more you haven't seen yet from Anu. Which are the two that are not about mythology where we can meet you? Okay. You got two to pick from, okay. my left or this my right. One actually, is so me that it's Come. pretty much meet a self-portrait. <laughs> meet Anu. Ah, yay. This is, this is pretty much a self-portrait. Can you do and, the pose for us? Um, just, I did it in a mirror, so it actually would go like this. On your right side, you know, this is the left and the right, right? There it is. How, how is this the avenue to meeting the true Anu? Well, the avenue is that I was uh, watching TV, which is what I do a lot. <laughs> I was um, watching uh, Marilyn Monroe uh, movie, The Seven Year Itch, um, while listening to it while I was doing the self-portrait. When I was first doing portraits, it's okay. when I was first doing portraits, I when I was first doing portraits, I did self-portraits often uh, to because it was the easiest model to find, and I knew I'd stay still for myself, and um, <laughs> I knew I'd stay still. But it ended up to be quite introspective as well because I had to look at myself and I had to figure out what my expression was saying what I wanted to put in there. Now, a big thing about this painting is that the hair is purple. When I was, when I was growing up, I was a punk rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and I was t totally outcasted for dyeing my hair purple. And I guess I'm just not doing it now because of work and 
uh, other <laughs> things, maturity while... Unless you were in the mythological thing, then you were a punk rocker, rather. Right? You would have been studying the Mahabharata more like that way. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just